Hello, dear students. In previous lecture, we have defined the relation between zeros and coefficients of a quadratic polynomial. So we have also defined some of the questions based on these exercise. So there was polynomials continue. So first condition was alpha plus beta is equal to minus b divided by a. And second condition was alpha into beta divided by c divided by a. As far as the question is concerned, suppose we have t square minus 15 is a quadratic polynomial. We have to find the relationship between zeros and coefficients of a quadratic polynomial. If we complete this polynomial here, we have a is 1, b is absent here, b is 0 because uh, middle term is absent here and the last term that is c, c is equal to minus 15. That means the coefficients are a is equal to 1, b is equal to 0 and c is equal to minus 15. As far as the zeros are concerned, we will put that equation equal to 0, t square that polynomial equal to 0, that is t square minus 15 equal to 0 or we can write it as t square is equal to 15 or on solving we get t is equal to under root of 15 plus minus. What is the value of alpha? We can take alpha as root 15. What is the value of beta? That is under root of minus 15. So we will find the relationship between zeros and coefficients. The first relationship is that alpha plus beta is equal to minus b divided by a. So first relationship is that alpha plus beta that is alpha plus beta is equal to minus b divided by a. What is the value of alpha here? That is root 15. And what is the value of beta? That is minus root 15 is equal to minus b divided by a. And what is the value of b? That is 0. And what is the value of a here? That is 1. Root 15 minus root 15, that is 0. 0 is equal to 0. That is the first relationship between zeros and coefficients. The relationship is that alpha plus beta is always equal to minus b divided by a. And what is second relationship? That is second. Alpha into beta is equal to c divided by a. What is the value of alpha here? That is root 15. Already know. It is in the multiplication. What is the value of beta? Beta is equal to under root of minus 15. Under root of minus 15. And what is the value of c? c is here, that is minus 15. And what is the value of a here? That is 1. This is root 15 into root 15. That is minus times root 15 whole square. Clear? Is equal to, here is minus 15 divided by 1, that is minus 15. Square and root will go cancel. Here is minus 15 is equal to minus 15. Therefore, the verification is satisfied. Therefore, product of zeros, that is alpha into beta, is equal to, always equal to C by A. So, you have seen in this lecture that the relationship between zeros and coefficients. First relationship is that alpha plus beta is equal to minus b divided by a and second relationship is alpha into beta is equal to c divided by a. Suppose we have another here that is 8u square plus 4u. We have to find the relationship between zeros and coefficients. What is the value of a here? a is equal to 8 and what is the value of b? b is here 4. And what is the value of c? c is equal to 0 because constant term is absent here. So as far as the zeros are concerned, we will equate this polynomial equal to 0. That is 8u square plus 4u is equal to 0. We will take common factor 4a. That means if you will take 4u as a common, that is 4 twos are 8 into u plus 1 is equal to 0. What is the value of u here? There are two linear factors. If we equate them to 0, we will get u is equal to 0 or 2u plus 1 is equal to 0. And what is the value of u? u is minus 1 divided by 2. What is the value of alpha here? Alpha is 0. And what is the value of beta? Beta is 1 divided by 2. So we will find the relationship relationship between zeros and 
coefficients. First relationship is that alpha plus beta is equal to minus b divided by a. That means if you find the relationship alpha, alpha is 0, beta is 1 by 2, is equal to c divided by a, is equal to minus b divided by a. What is the value of b? That is minus 4 divided by a. And what is the value of a? That is 8. Here we get 0, the value of alpha is 0 here. That means alpha plus beta, what is the value of beta? That is minus b by 2, there is minus 0 plus into minus, that is minus 1 by 2. Here it remains 4 ones are, 4 twos are 8, it is minus 1 by 2. That is the first relationship. As far as the second relationship is concerned, that is alpha into beta is equal to, is equal to c divided by a. And what is the alpha value of alpha? That is 0. And what is the value of beta? 0 into 1 by 2. And what is the value of c? The value of c is here 0. Divide by a. What is the value of a? a is here 8. On solving this, you get 0 into 1 by 2, that is 0, is equal to 0 divided by 8, and that is 0. And this is the product of zeros, and this is the sum of zeros. LHS is equal to RHS. So both the relationships are uh, verified. That means alpha plus beta and alpha into beta. So we conclude in this topic that the relationship between zeros and coefficients of a quadratic polynomial are nothing but alpha plus beta is equal to minus b divided by a and the second is alpha into beta is equal to c divided by a. So now the question arises here if you have a if you have to frame a quadratic polynomial suppose you have given two zeros you have given alpha plus beta that is sum of zeros and you have given alpha plus alpha into beta you have provided the two conditions alpha plus beta and alpha into beta and you have to frame a quadratic polynomial to frame a quadratic polynomial whose sum of zeros and product of zeros is given can be expressed as k into x square minus sx plus p that means in order to frame a quadratic polynomial with given as the sum of zeros and product of zeros where the condition is this where s is equal to sum of zeros and p is equal to product of zeros p is equal to the product of zeros and this k k is a or k is any constant it will be a common factor so we can say that if you have sum of zeros given and the product of zeros given and you have to frame a quadratic polynomial the quadratic polynomial will be of the form k into x square minus sx plus p where x square is the quadratic polynomial minus s what s represents s represents here the sum of zeros that is given and this p p is the product of zeros that is also given so if we take an example like this if you have 0 comma root 5 what is 0 comma root 5 that means alpha plus beta or we can write sum of zeros sum of zeros is equal to 0 that means alpha plus beta and second condition is that product of zeros product of zeros that is equal to root 5 that means simply we can say that s is equal to 0 and p is equal to root 5 and you have to frame the quadratic polynomial so the equation is like this k times x square x square as it is minus sx what is the value of s here that is 0 into x and what is the value of p here the value of p is here root 5 so and the value of k is here there is no common factor we can take k is equal to 1 so lastly we can say there is x square plus root 5 and this is the required polynomial whose sum of zeros is 0 and the product of zeros is root 5 so we will define the equation like this if you have given alpha plus beta and you are provided alpha into beta that means sum of zeros and the product of zeros the quadratic polynomial will be of the form k times x square minus sx plus p where s is equal to sum of zeros and p is equal to product of zeros simply you have to put the value of s and p in this equation you will get the quadratic polynomial like this 
This is x square plus root 5. We'll take another example here. This is 1 by 4 minus 1 by 4. That means here the first thing is that s is equal to s is equal to 1 by 4 and p is equal to minus 1 by 4. But we have to frame a quadratic polynomial. The quadratic polynomial will be like this. It is x square minus sx. What is the uh, value of s here? s is here 1 by 4 into x plus p. What is the value of p? That is minus 1 divided by 4. On solving this, it is not in the standard form. We can take 4 as LCM. We can write it as 4x square or you can, in other words, we can say that it is a cross multiplication. It is 4x square minus x minus 1 divided by 4. We have taken LCM as 4. Or we can write it as 1 divided by 4 into 4x square minus x minus 1. So what is this? So k here, the value of k is equal to 1 divided by 4. But it's not important to write it k is equal to 1 divided by 4. So we can write it in the form of 4x square minus x minus 1. So this is a quadratic polynomial. The condition was that you are put s is equal to 1 divided by 4 and p is equal to 1 divided by 4. That is first thing is the sum of zeros and second condition is the product of zeros. In order to frame a quadratic polynomial, we have to put the value of s and value of p here. Or we can say this like third part we have 1 comma 1. And what is the value of s is here? s is equal to 1. And what is the value of p is here? That is 1. Where to frame a quadratic polynomial? You know that. This is like this. x square minus sx plus p. Clear? So we can write it as x square minus what is the value of s? That is minus 1. So the value of s is equal to 1 and p is equal to 1. That is the sum of zeros is 1 and the product of zeros is 1. So we have a quadratic polynomial x square minus sx. What is the value of s? That is 1 into x. That is x. And what is the value of p? That is 1. So this is the required quadratic polynomial given s is equal to 1 and p is equal to 1. We can take other, another example here root 3 comma 1 divided by 2. What will be the quadratic polynomial? Here s is equal to root 3 and p is equal to 1 divided by 2. What is the given uh, polynomial? That is in the form of x square, that is x square minus sx, that is minus root x, root 3x plus p. What is the value of p? That is 1 by 2. Simply we have to put two values, s and p. So on cross multiplication we will get 2x square minus 2 root 3x plus 1 divided by 1 by 2 that will take as a common factor. So the required polynomial is 2x square minus 2 root 3x plus 1. So we conclude that here the if you if you have to frame a quadratic polynomial and you are provided two things alpha plus beta and alpha into beta you are provided the two conditions that means sum of zeros and the product of zeros. So the required quadratic polynomial will be of the form kx square minus sx plus p where k is a constant. So as far as the s is concerned where s is equal to the sum of zeros and the second condition is that p, p is a product of zeros. If we discuss this 0 comma root 0 comma root 5, 0 is equal to the sum of zeros and p is the root 5. So by substituting these two values in the required equation we get s is equal to 0 and p is equal to root 5. The quadratic polynomial can be expressed like this k into x square minus 0 into x plus root 5. So you will get x square plus root 5. Same is in these questions. So we will now decide here the division algorithm. Division algorithm for polynomials. What is division algorithm? We will take simply an example of suppose 43 and we will divide 43 by 7. On dividing 43 by 7 you will get two things. One is the coefficient and another, another is the remainder. We can take 7, 6 or 42 that is remainder is 1. You can express this 43 is equal to 7 into 6 plus 1. What is the condition here? This is divisor, this is coefficient. That means divisor into coefficient plus remainder. But see towards the remainder. Remainder is always less than the divisor. 
We take another example, 42. And we will divide 42 by 7 again. On dividing 42 by 7, we get 7, 6 or 42. And what is the remainder? Remainder is 0. <clears throat> and this 42 can be expressed 7 into 6 plus 0. Remainder is here 0. The condition is that either the remainder will be less than the divisor or the remainder will be 0. So if you divide 42 by 7, you get two things. One is the coefficient, another is the remainder. And this is the divisor. And this dividend, 42, can be expressed 7 into 6 plus 0. So remainder is here 0. Here remainder is always less than the divisor or it will be equal to 0. We will generalize this concept. It is in terms of numbers. We will generalize this concept in terms of polynomials. That is why it is called the division algorithm for polynomials. In terms of polynomials, if you have polynomial p of x of degree greater or equal to 1, the degree of polynomial is greater or equal to 1. If you divide this polynomial by another polynomial, that is g of x, but provide the condition that this g of x is not equal to 0. Why? Because if g of x is 0 polynomial, you cannot divide the polynomial by 0. That is not defined. So we have a polynomial of degree greater or equal to 1 and you divide this g of x, we will get two things. The coefficient that is represented by q of x and the remainder that is r of x. Same in case of 43, in case of 42. If the remainder is 0, 7 is a factor of 42. And this 42 can be expressed 42 is equal to 7 into 6 plus 0. And this 43 can be expressed 7 into 6 plus 1. Remainder is less than the divisor. Same is the case here. P of x can be expressed. P of x is equal to divisor into coefficient. That is g of x into q of x. Same is here, 7 into 6. That means g of x into q of x plus r of x. As in case of 43. 43 can be expressed as 7 into 6 plus 1. That is divisor into coefficient plus remainder. Same is the case here. If you have polynomial p of x and you are dividing this polynomial by a non-zero polynomial, that is g of x, and you get two things, q of x and r of x. What is p of x? p of x can be expressed g of x into q of x plus r of x. See the two conditions here. Either remainder will be equal to 0 or it is always less than the divisor. Here it comes in terms of degrees. We can write it as either r of x is equal to 0. Simply first condition is that remainder will be equal to 0. If remainder will be equal to 0, 7 is the factor of 42. You know that because remainder is 0. Same is the condition here. The first condition is r of x is equal to 0. In this case, g of x will be the factor of p of x. Second condition or degree of r of x is less than degree of g of x. This is the condition number second. The condition first is that r of x is equal to 0. If remainder is 0, then g of x is a factor of q of x. We can write it as g of x is a factor of p of x. Second condition, this was first condition and this is second condition. Degree of r of x. The degree of r of x is always less than the degree of g of x. The degree of r of x is less than the degree of g of x. So this result, p of x is equal to g of x into q of x plus r of x where r of x is equal to 0 or degree of r of x is less than the degree of g of x. This result is known as division algorithm, division algorithm for polynomials. This result is known as division algorithm for polynomials. We repeat here, if you have a polynomial p of x and you are dividing this polynomial with a another polynomial that is g of x. The condition is that g of x is a non-zero polynomial. We get two things, coefficient and the remainder. 
that is in the form of q of x and in the form of r of x because these are all polynomials then this p of x as per this 43 and 42 you can express as g of x into q of x plus r of x either the remainder will be equal to 0 first case if the remainder will be equal to 0 then g of x is a factor of p of x second condition is this if degree of r of x is less than the degree of g of x this result is known as division algorithm for the polynomials now we will divide the polynomial g of x that is 3x cube plus x square plus 2x plus 5 this is actually g of x and we will divide this g of x by a non-zero polynomial that is x square plus 2x plus 1 you can divide because it is a cubic polynomial and it is a quadratic polynomial the rule of division you know that from the earlier classes 8th class and the 9th class it is simply like that it is 3x cube and here is x square what you need here you need the term 3x cube exactly here but you have x square. I can write it as 3x. We can write 3x into x square, that is 3x cube. Then you have to multiply 3x with this 2x. That means 3x into 2x, that is a positive 2x. This 3x into 2, 2x, that is 3 to the 6x square. And I will write here 6x square. Clear? And the lastly, you have to multiply 3 of x with this plus 1, that is plus 3x. And one thing here, the most important thing is here, you have to write the polynomials in terms of their degrees. Suppose you have x cube in terms of x cube. You have x square and there is x square. And you have 3x and the degree is 1 here. Then you have the rule of division, then you have to subtract. This is plus, it becomes minus. This is plus, it becomes minus and plus 3x is also uh, plus and it becomes minus. Then we'll subtract. This is 3x cube and this is minus 3x cube. It will go canceled like this. Now, the second condition is here. It is positive x square here is minus 6x square. That is minus 6 and plus 1. You will get minus 5x square. And last is here minus 3x and this is plus 2x we will get here minus x and last is that is plus 5 constant term now we will look for the division again here is minus 5 x square and we have already x square you have to multiply this x square with minus 5 to become minus 5 x square so i will write here minus 5 because there is x square and there is x square they are equal you have to multiply only minus 5 with x square that becomes minus 5 x square the second condition is that you have to multiply minus 5 with plus 2x. That becomes plus into minus, that is minus 5 to the 10x. That is here. Plus into minus, that is minus, that is 10x. Clear? Plus 2x into minus 5, that is minus 10x. It becomes, it is minus, it becomes plus, and this is minus, it becomes plus. And lastly, minus 5 into plus 1, that is minus 5 and it becomes plus. So we have minus 5x square, it is minus 10x square, it is minus 5, it is plus, it is also plus, and this is plus. On subtraction, we get, it is plus 5x square and minus 5x square, it will go cancelled. Here remains minus x and plus 10x, here remains 9x. And what about this? This is plus 5 and plus 5, that is plus 10. So, what about the division now? The last step here. Here, what is the degree of this polynomial remainder? The degree is 1 here. And what is the degree of divisor? This is 2. And we see that degree of r of x, degree of r of x, that is remainder, is less than degree of g of x. So, we will stop the division here. Because we cannot divide further. Why? Because the degree of r of x is 1. That is less than the degree of g of x. What is the degree of g of x? That is square. That is quadrate. It is a linear polynomial. So, the remainder r of x is here 9x plus 10. And what is the coefficient? Coefficient we get here that is q of x. That is equal to 3x minus 5. 3x minus 5. And you can check it from the division algorithm that is p of x this 3x cube 
प्लस एक्स स्क्वेर प्लस टू एक्स प्लस फाइव कैन बी एक्सप्रेस इन द फॉर्म ऑफ दिस जी ऑफ एक्स इंट क्यू ऑफ एक्स एक्स स्क्वेर प्लस टू एक्स प्लस वन इंट थ्री एक्स माइनस फाइव एंड प्लस रिमाइंडर व्हाट इज द रिमाइंडर दैट इज नाइन एक्स प्लस टेन ऑन मल्टीप्लीकेशन यू विल चेक दैट एल एच एस विल बिकम इक्वल टू आर एच एस दिस नॉट इंपॉर्टेंट हियर इन क्लास टेंथ बट यू कैन चेक इट फ्रॉम द प्रीवियस क्लास इज दैट दिस पॉलिनोमियल पी ऑफ एक्स इज इक्वल टू जी ऑफ एक्स इंट क्यू ऑफ एक्स प्लस आर ऑफ एक्स सो दिस इज ऑल अबाउट द पॉलिनोमियल्स द डिविजन ऑफ पॉलिनोमियल्स बाय द डिविजन एलगोरिज्म फॉर पॉलिनोमियल्स होप यू हैव एंजॉयड द लेक्चर डिविजन एलगोरिज्म फॉर पॉलिनोमियल्स वी कैन टेक फर्दर मोर एग्जाम्पल्स इन नेक्स्ट सेशन टिल देन बाय बाय Thank you.